Hey everybody, welcome back to Photo Beast. Today I wanted to share with you one of the best ways to really up your game when you edit a wildlife picture. A lot of people that are just getting into photography, they feel like just capturing the image is everything and that is just a small fraction of it you got to have your lighting your sharpness you got to look out for the weather the humidity the air quality index and then after you get your image and in this case we're going to be doing a puppy or a few puppies today um you want to get eye level with your subject so you probably will have to lay on the ground or flip your camera out and hold it down which can be a little a little nerve-wracking at times but um we're going to edit some of that and i'm going to show you how to really make the subject pop when you're doing stuff in your yard or at the park and things like that. But here we are about two days ago at the park and I wanted to show you, this is straight up out of camera. Now when you're shooting images at the park, you're gonna to wanna to get eye level, like I stated earlier. And as you can see, when you're outside, if you're not setting your color balance, your camera will set it for you, right? Or your white balance. Now I put mine on auto because I shoot only in raw. I shoot manual mode, I shoot the lowest aperture possible for my lens. And in this instance, I would think I was using the R6 Mark II and the RF 100 to 500. So at 500 millimeters, my lowest aperture is 7.1. Now you see the bouquet in the background. The reason why is because 500 millimeters gives you a really good compression. And I did a video on that if you wanna check it out. There's a lot of science that goes into why you don't need an F1.2 or an F2.8 lens to get a blurry background. Actually, the depth of field will be more compressed with a super telephoto lens than it would with something like a 50 millimeter f1.8 or even an 85 f1.8. I actually did a video 85 f1.8 versus 800 f11 and the 800 f11 beat the 85 and the bokeh, believe it or not. Now what you're going to do is get down eye level and I like to shoot a shutter speed of at least five, one five hundredths of a second because puppies are wigglers and they move around. And in this case, I shot one eight hundredths of a second, seven one and ISO 2500. This was cleaned up a little bit, but the final image is gonna look like this. And the reason why I changed the colors from that to this is because I want the image to be softer and I want the subject to pop. Thus, to make the subject pop a little bit better, you wanna take out some of those green tints and one of the things you can do to help yourself with this is to get yourself a color wheel. A lot of times when you use color wheels and color theory, everything in your picture will kind of blend. So you have to find your subject and that's gonna be your main color. And in this situation, it would be our dog right here, which gives us kind of like a yellow orange. So if I take my color wheel and go up to the yellow orange, right? And you have your tint, your tone and your shade for each one. What I'll do is I'll look down here and I try to find some split complementaries or I'll just do complementary colors and I'll use colors that complement each other. That's one of the best ways. That way your final product is a little bit more harmonious and it just looks and feels right. You want the, the picture to feel right. There are so many times when I go on wildlife forums and people ask me why does your pictures look better than mine and i've even shot with some really good professionals and they'll ask me what are you doing differently and they're not catching on to what i'm doing and i'll show you guys real quick so let's open up an image real fast and i'll do front to back editing for you so we're going to take this image here we're just going to go to develop in lightroom the first thing you want to make sure your lens corrections are straight transform is the second one i do and this image really don't need any transformations i'm going to hit auto i like to hit auto to see where my exposure should be now lightroom can get carried away when you hit auto and sometimes it blows the image totally out but that's fine because you can correct it and you can go back down we don't want the image too bright but we want to do something because it's a puppy it's a baby we want to do something light and airy so over here we're going to pull back our contrast which is nothing more than blacks and whites and then I'm gonna mess with this highlight slider and just make sure the highlights if you look over here aren't blown out and something in here is fine and you can always check your histogram if you don't know how to read a histogram it's very simple your whites are gonna be this side your darks are gonna be this side your midtones are in the middle so you want the bulk of your colors or your histogram to be right here in the middle it's gonna be a little this way and this way, depending on what colors are in there or what exposure is going on with the scene. But for the most part, as long as you don't have stuff pressed up against the wall where the highlights is or the wall where the shadows are, you should be pre pretty good to go. If we take our blacks and just pull our blacks up, it gives us a little bit more light and airy picture. We wanna be able to see her eyeball. Now, 
One of the next things we want to do before we get into a whole lot of editing with our tone curves and our detail and our colors and stuff is I want to go ahead and do whatever crop I want to do right now and then I want to go ahead and enhance or get rid of the noise. So let's go ahead and see, maybe I'll move her a little bit this way, kind of level the ground because I was laying on the ground a little bit and I want to center her just a little bit more because she is pretty much our focus and I can click that and she's gonna be our focal point. Now, as you can see, we have quite a bit of green going on over here. So what I'm gonna do is hit enhance. If you haven't done that it's before, it's very easy to have this little preview window right here and it just shows you, you don't have to get carried away with this either. Usually 50 is usually pretty good. And just check around the eyeballs. You can also crank it up a little bit more if you want. 60, 70, and see the before and after. So let's go ahead and enhance from here. And all we're doing is basically get rid of most of the color noise. By getting rid of that color noise, we're just cleaning up our image a little bit more. Once I enhance it, there's gonna be a couple other things I'm gonna to wanna to do. And then we're gonna take it over to Photoshop and do some light cleaning. Now we're here. One of the things you can do is pull this up. I wanna to go to probably 100% for this particular picture. And I wanna get these eyes kinda of sharp. And one of the things you do is pull up your texture just a little bit, maybe 15 or 20, and take your clarity down, maybe five or 10, somewhere around there. You can keep your vibrance on because that's your pretty colors. You don't want to mute out the colors in the picture. And then we're going to go down to detail. And this is where a lot of the magic happens. This is where you're going to hold your option or alt key. A lot of times you can go here and kind of see when it's in black and white. One of the things I like to do is keep my radius pretty low. Because if your radius gets too big, your picture gets really, really torn up. And then this is where we see the details and how they're coming along and you don't want anything to be sharpened that you don't want sharp, okay? And you can kind of see the difference from the befores and afters. So let's see, before and after. Subtle changes so far. So now we're gonna go down to our color mixer. And this is where a lot of the post-processing that I was telling you at the beginning of the video comes from. Over here, you have your hue, saturation, and luminance. And this is where your color wheel or your color theory really comes into play. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our green and we're actually gonna change the color of the green, but we're gonna do that very last. The first thing we're gonna do is actually go to saturation. There's two ways to do this. Whenever you have green, you have a lot of yellow in it, okay? So you can take your yellow slider and just back it off and look, you're losing a lot of the puppy there, but a lot of times if you just take your slider and just slide that back down a little bit, you can see how she's popping now, see? You want your subject to stand out, not the background. So now let's look at the before and after. That's a huge change. The other thing you can do is go to luminance. Now do the same thing with luminance. Because it's bright and airy, we don't want it too bright to take away from the dog, but we don't want it too dark either because this is gonna be a light and airy kind of picture. Then we're gonna go up here to our green and we're gonna find some greens and yellows that actually blend with this picture. And then last but not least, we're gonna go down to luminance and saturation for the blue. Because she has that blue eye, I wanna turn up my saturation and then I wanna turn up my luminance. And the reason why I'm going to oversaturate the eyeball is because I'm turning up the luminance. If you were just to turn up the luminance, you wouldn't be able to see the blue in the eye because it would wash it all out. So now let's look at before and after. See these little subtle changes? And I might even change that color green a little bit over here, maybe change that yellow a little bit more just to make everything kind of blend and look natural. And see, this actually fits with the color wheel because you got your orange and then you got your green and over here you got your blues and your purples. So now we have a decently sharp image, okay? We've got our colors in check. We've got it denoised. Now, one of the last things we're gonna wanna do is clean it up. So let's take it and edit in Photoshop. And Photoshop has come a long way in just the last year with a lot of the little tools they have and features that they have, especially for people that don't wanna spend hours and hours. If you're anything like me, when I edit a picture, I like to get in and get out. Some people like to sit down and edit for hours. 
I'm not the one. So the first thing I like to do when I go to Photoshop is hit Control or Command J and make a copy. That way I still have my original. I'm gonna turn off that DXO real fast. Now while we're in here, I'm gonna go over and the first thing I wanna do is go get my remove tool. And I'm just gonna click on all the silly pieces that are actually on her face. And I'm gonna hit Z for zoom and I'm gonna blow this up a little bit. And I use my space bar to move it around. And let's get our remove tool once again, give that a little boop. If it's gonna take a long time for everyone, then I won't use it. I'll actually use spot healing because it's a lot faster. A lot of times the remove tool just goes real quick. And the reason we're cleaning these little poo-poo stains off her face is just to make the picture look prettier. I might even get rid of one or two of these wild hairs over here. I'm gonna keep those uh, down here. Got a little bit in the whisker. She had been playing in the food earlier before we went to the park and we took them to the park so they could literally go boo-boo. Now I'm gonna hit Z again for zoom. I'm gonna back this out and then I am going to use, right here, there's two things I can use. I can either get like a lasso tool and go around her whole collar like this or I'm gonna deselect. I wanna keep the collar. I just wanna get rid of this huge bolt thing. And I like to cut around the air area, pretty liberal. And with that, I'm just gonna hit generate a fill and generate. And we're still gonna do some other things like some light sharpening. We're gonna do some dodging and burning and then we're gonna add a little vignette at the end. Came out good with the very first picture. Here's our second picture. That's beautiful too. The third one, let me see which one's first look better. Huh, I like both. I actually like two because she's a little smoother right here. So I'm gonna go with that. I'm going to uncheck the background, but I'm gonna take my layers and I'm just gonna merge visible, okay? Over here, I'm gonna grab my um, sharp uh, sharpen tool and I'm just gonna click her eyeball just ever so slightly around her eyeball and right around her nose and her tongue and maybe right around the tips of the ears, just a couple little areas, some of her eyelashes and little single stray hairs. You don't wanna get carried away with the sharpen tool and then I'm gonna hit my space bar, put this down a little bit. We're gonna do some quick dodging and burning. Nothing fancy, so hit your dodge tool. Usually I use a pen and a, a tablet, but I'm not using that today. I'm gonna keep things simple. When I dodge and burn, I like to keep my brush pretty small. And as you can see, as we're going around her ears, it's just bringing that little bit of white to life. And I'm gonna click her eyeballs just a little bit Go around the nose here. And we're just enhancing those little, those little parts. See the edges of her right here? Now you can dodge and burn. I've oh, got a little carried away right there. Get the little stray hairs and stuff and those really, really accentuate. And you can spend hours on this. Let's do a quick burn. The secret to dodging and burning, if I'm gonna be honest with you, is keep your percentages pretty low, usually 10 to 20%. Just keep them turned down. And I don't do a lot of burning, but I do just enough to pull some of those little shadows back. Add some of the blacks around the eye there. Give her a little eye, some color there. And then right inside of the ears. Usually when I'm doing a dog, I'll focus on the ears. Birds are a little bit different, but we just wanna break up some of the monotony of all the white fluff. And that she has a lot of. And see, by adding a little bit of shadows back, what we did is we're trying to make it go from two-dimensional to three-dimensional. And I think that's perfect right there. So let's tick this box right here. What we're gonna do is now go back to our layer panel, flatten the image, and then we're gonna tick the box up here. And yes, we're gonna save it. This is gonna take us back to Lightroom. Now, let's go back to Lightroom. Let's shut down Photoshop and look how far we have come. We came from this to this and we're not even done yet. Look at that. So let's go down to effects and then let's work on our vignette. As we bring the vignette in, and I'm a heavy hitter when it comes to a vignette. I find that sweet spot that just accentuates her face. 
then I find the right roundness. And sometimes I'll even make my vignette really, really dark just so I can see where my midpoint is and the roundness. See, for this one, I think right about here would be good. And then I bring my vignette back up. See, I'm not liking that roundness. I like a little bit of dark over her head though. So we're gonna do something like this, something like that. And it just draws your eye in, draws the eye in. All that needs to be a little bit darker. And then we can feather it out just a little bit. You don't wanna feather too much because then you get rid of it. So let's look before, after. That's our little vignette. And um, at this point, I think that's about it. And then I might go into calibration and just work on some of the primary colors and just turn them up and down. Like the blue in this one looks really good. And that's pretty much it. I think it's done, you know? And also by making the vignette, we took the little husky in the corner down here and we basically darkened her so she's not a focus anymore. Even though she's out of focus, if she's not darkened in any kind of way, what it's doing is it's still your eyes going there. You don't want the eye to go to anything but that dog's eyes. So we have these cute, sharp little eyes. And you know, at this point, if you want to add a little bit more sharpening or I don't know, it's a puppy. I don't want to over sharpen a puppy, <laughs> you know? We can get crazy with these sharpening tools these days. And then I might even throw a little tone curve on there just to uh, make Pigs Imperfect happy. Yeah, something like that. And then if you want to put a matte finish, just bring that up just a tad. And there we go. You know, the before right here, one last time and the after. That's it, everybody. Thank you for joining me today here on Photo Beast. If you could, please like, share, and subscribe so this video can help others learn to edit like a pro. Also, stay tuned because I have a book coming out. It's already on PDF have it ready to go. I want to figure out a way to get it to you guys. It is a very comprehensive book for everything photography. Anyways, I love you guys. Thank you once again. Please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care. God bless you. Yeah, boom, ready for every click. Take a shot, make it stick. Yeah, boom, ready for every click. Take a shot, make it stick. Huh. Snap the wildlife beast of the lids. Carolina roots, tech reviews, we blend. Camera clicks getting wild in the trees. Photo beast here, bringing wildlife to its knees. Photo beast, snap and capture. Tech in nature, full of rapture. Photo beast, wild and free from the Carolinas. Come and see.